to the 12 days of Christmas. On the 10th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me 10 lords of leaping. Like, who wants lords of leaping? Nine ladies dancing. Nobody. Uh, but on this 10th day, the title is Love Give. So on this incredible Christmas season, what are we actually celebrating? We're celebrating John 3, 16. For God loved the world so much that He gave His only Son, so that anyone who believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So God, who is love, gives. And that same love, that same Spirit has now been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Luke 6.31 says, treat others as you would want them to treat you. Luke 6.38 says, for if you give, you will get. If your gift will return to you in full and overflowing measure, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more and running over. Whatever measure you used to give, large or small, it will be used to measure what is given back to you. You. Proverbs 11, 24 and 25 says, It is possible to give away and become richer. It is also possible to hold on too tightly and lose everything. Yes, the liberal man shall be made rich. By watering others, he waters himself. I want to tell you about one of my favorite things that we did as a family during uh, me and Faith's teenage years and our young adult, even our early college years, because it's important. Um, and again, know that these things that we talk about don't have to be celebrated or experienced with just your blood family. Family is whoever you share life with, whoever you decide uh, to do life with. So this could be your friend group. It could be your college and career friend group. It could be a woman's group. Um, the people that you have in your heart to celebrate with, don't exclude yourself from these opportunities because you don't have immediate family. You're not married. Maybe you don't have children or you're in a season where uh, you don't have fellowship with, with your family. Don't exclude yourself from these potential fun and joy-filled activities uh, to help you experience the best Christmas that you've ever had, especially as your kids are growing. And again, this could absolutely be done with littles, with elementary um, aged kids. Uh, we didn't start doing it until we were like middle school, high school, and even young adult years. Um, and it's important for them because they can be such self-focused years. Obviously, you know, I'm coming at you at as the youth pastor of Choose Life Church and, and a youth voice in this ministry. Um, but again, kids can be included in this. But during those teenage years, young adult years, college years, you're so focused focused on the car you need, the scholarship you need, you know, your next steps, you want a wife, you want a husband, you know, you want a new pair of shoes, you know, you can be so self-focused and not that selfishness isn't available as a temptation to us, regardless of the season. Um, and especially in this hour of the church in second Timothy three, one through five, the Bible talks about that in the last days, people will be lovers of self. It's your job as parents, grandparents, or even you versus you, that you're not always focused on what you want, what what's on your list to get, but what you give. And so what we would do, um, and we traveled a lot um, in our high school, middle school, young adult years, we would go out of town for Christmas. That was just something that we enjoyed. And um, for a particular season, long season, we would go to Dallas a lot. And one particular hotel, mom would just pack our stockings with us. And on Christmas Eve, um, which is why I'm, I'm telling you about this just a few days away from Christmas, because there's still time to do it. Uh, we would go on Christmas Eve to this particular Target in Dallas, and we've done this all over, not just in Dallas, but but you can absolutely do this on the road. You can do this at home. Um, we would go to this particular store. We had already drawn names. We had a budget and we had a time limit. And so we would go and shop for the the contents of the stocking of the person whose name we drew. And when we were younger, we were given the money by our parents. We were given a budget. So now we're learning what it looks like to stick within a budget. You know, so many people and not just teenagers and young adults, but in general, they don't know how to shop. They don't know 
They don't pay attention to other people's details. They don't pay attention to their likes and their dislikes. It, and, and if you don't know that about the people that you're the closest to, uh, you know, th- use this as an opportunity to really get outside of yourself and kind of acknowledge, gosh, you know, I've been so selfish. I've been so focused on me and what I want and what I like that I've been completely unaware of the people that I share my closest life with, whether it's immediate family or like I said earlier, friends or whatever. So they're learning to shop. They're learning to think about other people. They're learning how to budget. We were learning how to budget. And then we had a time limit. So there was a, there was an added element of like, uh, you know, time that was fun. And we checked out and Sometimes we would take our, we would go uh, Christmas Eve early because, you know, stores close early on Christmas Eve. So we would go earlier in the day. And then that night we would exchange our stockings, like close your eyes, put your stocking, uh, their stocking in front of them. And then they would open their eyes and you would be the one to say, Hey, I'm the one that, that bought all this stuff for you. You know, as we got older, um, we didn't use our parents' money. We had our own money that we brought to the event, uh, to the project. And, uh, you know, the budget can obviously be a small or great as what you're presently working with. Doesn't have to be a lot of money. You could absolutely do this at the dollar store. The point is not how expensive everything is. The point is that you're not being selfish and you're actually challenging yourself to think about other people and think about their likes and their interests. Uh, You're challenging yourself in in a planned amount of money that you can spend and in an allotment of time. It's just fun all the way around. So you can then open the stockings Christmas Eve or you could wait and do them Christmas morning. They don't have to take the place of gifts that you are already giving, but they absolutely could. You could do that instead of gifts or in addition to gifts. I just know as a teenager, as a young adult, um, as a middle schooler, that was really, really fun. And I'm so grateful. And it would, it would be so fun to be like in the store. And, and again, if you're doing it with littles, you may have to partner them up with an older brother and older sister, but you know, I'd be in the aisle shopping and, you know, maybe I'd draw on my dad's name and he would walk past me and you know, I'd have to like hide my stuff and make sure that he wasn't peeking or he wasn't looking. It's just a lot of fun. You can do it with friends. You can do it with, um, again, a ladies group or, or whatever, draw names, have a budget, have a, 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 uh, set amount of time. You know, the older we got, we did branch out and go beyond just one store. And it was like on Christmas Eve, we spent like kind of the whole Christmas Eve everywhere we went. And again, it doesn't have to be on Christmas Eve, but but for the most part, the things that you're filling your stocking with are not out of stock. They're the basic things that you all enjoy, the kind of gum that you like. You know, Pastor Kathy would always, even as we got older, she would continue every year to give us a new color book and a box of crayons. I mean, nothing makes my childlike heart sing like a fresh new box of Crayola colors. And so my mom would still to this day, put a color book and a fresh box of crayons in my stocking. Again, it's not hard to pack. Just throw them, um, you know, in your luggage. If you're traveling, if you're going out of town, you may not even have stockings. They have them everywhere. You get them at the dollar store. You could make your own stockings and then um, go out and, and spend a little bit of time running through the store and getting the blood pumping. Uh, you can go get hot chocolate. You can all cram in the same car because especially as your kids get older, uh, you know, they're used to to driving their own car and you're in your car, you could force that everybody gets in the same car. We're all going together to the store and we've got a, a specific amount of money. We've got a specific amount of time. If they have a part-time job, um, you know, when, uh, like I said, as we got older, we used our money when we were younger, we weren't working yet. Um, our parents gave us the amount, the money that we were to spend. And, um, it's just all around one of my favorite memories um, as a young adult, as a teenager, as a middle schooler is filling the stockings. And again, it really knows no age. You can, I mean, that's when it started for us, but you can keep the tradition rolling or start it for the very first time, regardless of how old you are. You know, Jesus gave, he gave his all. He gave his life. Obviously the father, he gave it all. He gave his life and his son. We should model that same kind of selfless, living and as parents and adults, guardians, grandmas, grandpas specifically, it's part of your job in training them in that admonition of the Lord that you teach them to not be selfish, that you teach them to be givers. And this is a fun way to do it. So grab some stockings. If you don't already, 
jump in the van, jump in the car, jump in the truck, um, head somewhere, local or non-local. If you're going out of town, throw the stockings in your suitcase. And I want to encourage you to be more intentional this year. Again, it's not an amount, but it's a sincere attitude of your heart that says, if God gave it all, I'm going to give my all as it pertains to my relationships and the people that I'm, that I'm the closest to. We love you guys so much. We're wishing you the merriest Christmas on this 10th day of Christmas. We love you.